<laughs> Go for it. <laughs> I'll cut this out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> or just leave yeah, it. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Welcome to the Reality Transurfing Podcast. This is the first episode. I'm your host, Bootsy Greenwood, and today I'm joined by the one and only Renee Garcia, uh, Transurfing Coach. How are you today? I'm doing very, very well. Thank you for asking. How are you? I'm well. Thank you so much. I'm really excited about this project, and uh, I'm excited to talk to you a little bit and uh, and learn more about you and your story. This is this is really cool. I'm I'm super excited. As you know, I've uh, read the books, um, but I want to talk to you a little bit today about, you know, why, why should people join our cult, Renee? Well, that is a, a very interesting question. Um, there's lots of ways that transurfing can assist um, anybody in improving their reality. Uh, the way that I like to say it is that the first part, if you were to split the transurfing knowledge into two parts, um, the first part would be uh, to help people that are in a hole, so to speak. So people that are feeling lost, um, people that are feeling like uh, they don't have energy to do their own things. Maybe there's a lot of chaos in their life emotionally with other people. Um, they don't like certain aspects of their reality or their life. So the first part of the knowledge is to uh, sort of clean all that stuff up. Then this, okay. the second part is for the people that have already found themselves at kind of like ground zero, you know, their, their life is, their life is good. Um, they've got a handle on their energy. They've got a handle on pendulums. They've got a handle on, you know, um, understanding what coordination is like, all that sort of stuff. And they want to improve on an already good existing model. So that would be, you know, kind of power punching your reality, so to speak, and really taking it to the next level, like what I, what I've done. That's awesome. Well, can you tell me a little bit about how you got involved in trans surfing? What got you in, in, and 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 what the process is like, uh, becoming an instructor? Yes. So, uh, my story is, is a dramatic one. Um, <clears throat> I was raised actually very lower middle class, um, in central California. I come from a, a long line of, um, of generations that had never, uh, went to college. Nobody had ever, ever really done anything for themselves, um, you know, uh, labor type work, too many kids to take care of. Nobody was living a happy reality or creating their own reality. Um, but from a very young age, I sort of somehow tapped in to this knowledge, uh, you know, way before I actually found the book, you know, some 30 years later. So I already inherently understood a lot of these concepts. And I think that's why when I actually found Transurfing, I was so blown away because there was a book that was in line with a lot of my thinking. Um, that being said, I also did a lot of things wrong. So I always understood the power of action. Um, I always understood uh, coordination, so so heart and mind alignment and uh, the energy that comes from that to fuel certain things that I'd done in my life. Um, but I had created a lot of importance, a lot of excess potential. Uh, I was tapped into a lot of pendulums that were really, really bad for me. I left home at a young age and I moved to Los Angeles where I created a name for myself. I started a business and over the next 15 years, um, really sort of uh, created this life that I thought that I wanted to live. I had everything. And when I mean everything, I mean everything. I had an amazing name. I had a great business that was thriving, very fashionable business. I had uh, a boyfriend that had a private jet and a yacht. And uh, I had <laughs> I had my own yacht, if you can believe that, that I <laughs> that I that I lived on that I lived on for two years in Marina del Rey. Um, wow. I traveled the world, I had fancy cars, I had amazing, you know, I had this amazing uh, condo in Venice that was just it was like it was wild. I mean, I lived a wild, wild reality. But 
I was completely miserable. I mean, I was completely miserable. And what I tell people is the closer I got to the person I thought I wanted to become, the more miserable I became. And that really was the truth. Like the more stuff I got, the more cool experiences, the more money in the bank. And I didn't understand what was wrong. I just, I could not figure out because I had always, you know, from a young child, I thought, if I have money, I'll be happy, right? If I have success, I'll be happy. If I can go and travel wherever I want in the world, I'll be happy. And then I was, I was getting all these things and they were increasing. But as they were increasing, I was becoming more and more miserable. So I had this experience and I won't go into it now, but it was an earth shattering experience where I uh, questioned everything about who I was, my reality, my environment, and my relationship to it. And I ended up doing something I thought I would never do. I literally got into my car one day in Venice, uh, parked outside of my beautiful condo. I got into my car, I packed a suitcase, and I drove away from LA and I never went back. Uh, yeah. So, so I, I, I went up North to Portland, Oregon actually, and was like, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? I'm going to start a new life. I, I started listening to Bob Proctor videos and he was talking about changing your paradigm. And I was like, okay, I got to change my paradigm. I got to change my paradigm, but I didn't know how to do that. So I just was winging it for a few months once getting up there. And then one day I was just scrolling through Instagram and I saw the words reality transurfing. And I swear to God, it was like these words came out of the screen right at Hmm. me and they were like glowing it was the weirdest (laughs) it was the weirdest thing and obviously my my curiosity was just completely lit up you know so i google transurfing um the space of variations audiobook pops up on youtube and i was going for long walks at this time so I put it on my my phone, put my earphones in, and I would take like a 10 mile walk and listen to the Space of Variations uh, audiobook. And I don't know, it was just like I became aligned with my truth. And I felt something I just fused directly to the knowledge. It wasn't confusing for me. I understood absolutely everything Vadim was talking about. And I felt high. I mean, I literally felt like I had taken a drug and I and I was just walking around the streets of Portland all of a sudden things started looking different. I started noticing a lot more around me. I started to come out of my head. I started to realize the things that I had done wrong. I was realizing also the things that I had done right. Um, And it just, you know, I embarked on a journey after that that has brought me to where I am now. And it's been spectacular, but the knowledge really did help me, um, connect with something deep inside me that I always knew uh, was the, the back the background of my reality. It just put it into words for me and it's become my it's become my soul at this point. I mean I live transurfing every single second of the day. So that's 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 how I got to transurfing. Um, what happened after that, I studied it for about a year. I couldn't get enough. I listened to all the audio, I read the books. Then I uh, had this amazing opportunity to, and I can't tell how, it's a little bit of a secret, but I had this amazing opportunity to go to St. Petersburg and meet Vadim Zeeland. And that was just hands down the best experience I've ever had in my life. Um, it It was truly surreal. And I spoke with him about, you know, my visions for transurfing for the U.S. He agreed. He got behind me 100 percent. He's endorsed me as, uh, you know, the, the, the ambassador for the North, North America and transurfing North America. So I do what I can to spread, spread the word here at home. I um, also have a lot of uh, support in especially the GCC countries, um, Europe, Asia, uh, so it's gone a little more international, but yeah, that's, that's kind of it. I 
fly by the seat of my pants and learn as I go. <laughs> and um, it's been about four years now, but it's been an absolutely life changing, life altering um, transition. And, you know, I look back on the way that I used to live and I just, I laugh now. I used to feel victim of my reality, a victim of my reality. But now I just look back and I laugh and I think, wow, look at all those pendulums, how they had you. And look at all the importance that you had created and balancing forces coming in all the time and excess potential just skyrocketing in every direction all the time. And I I literally used my past use my past experiences as examples, you know, for myself and for others of this is what not to do, right? This is what, this is how you can make a mess. And even Vadim Zeeland states it in the beginning of his book, or I think it's on his website, that he had made his life a mess. And then this is how he sort of, you know, righted himself by writing trans surfing. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's where I am now, but it never, you know, trans surfing never, um, I never stop learning every day. I see deeper and deeper and deeper into the knowledge and things just keep getting better and better and better. So I'm blessed. I'm happy to be here and I'm greatly looking forward to what the future brings for, for myself and trans surfing. Yeah, definitely. I think it's uh, really cool what you're putting together at Transurfing TV as well. I think it's a great idea. There's a lot of collaborators uh, coming together and putting together some really cool content to get the word out. Um, do you want to talk about that and like how, you, how think you to do it? You know, I have to say that the whole concept of outer intention has been very, very easy for me to understand from the moment that I read the book, because that's actually how I got what I got in my old life. Um, I was using a lot of inner intention, too, but I did understand outer intention on a deep level. So when I started um, this journey with transurfing, I realized the value of uh, just using outer intention with everything. You know, that's how I got to meet Vadim Zeeland. Once I was there, um, that's how I, you know, that's what I used to to to, to formulate my plan. Um, and Vadim, of course, saw that and he backed me. Then I came home and I was like, okay, what does trans surfing need? And then I thought to myself, it needs some lessons so people can practically apply the techniques and the concepts to their lives, right? Because Transurfing is an amazing book, but it lacks practical application. So that was me tuning into the outer intention, um, you know, or the inner intention of Transurfing using my outer intention. So I decided that that's what my environment was in need of. You know, that's what my transurfing environment was in need of. So I, I started creating this lesson book, which took me, I'm still working on it, um, three years, you know, to date. Uh, it's be, There's additions to it all the time. And uh, after, you know, the bulk of that was done, I started doing seminars for the International Academy of personal development by Salah El Rashad, um, who is also endorsed by Vadim Zeeland. Um, and it's just been a constant, um, a constant look at trans surfing and asking myself, what is trans surfing asking for? What is trans surfing need? And, you know, I do my Instagram account and I have a website and I try to get you know, the word out there as much as I can in various ways. But people kept asking me, can you do more videos? Can you do more videos? And I'm actually, believe it or not, an incredibly shy person. Um, I really don't like being on camera, but I realized that, uh, you know, I was going to have to start putting myself out more if, you know, I, I really wanted to get trans surfing to people. And I thought, okay, well, there's a few people I see on Instagram that are talking about trans surfing really well. Maybe I could get together with them and we could just make some videos talking about trans surfing and put them up on YouTube. And that's kind of how it started. And I reached out to a few people and then I made a post about, um, you know, anybody that's interested. And it was amazing how many people responded. And again, nobody's 
thinking this is a paid gig. It's not a paid gig. Everybody's doing this, you know, because they're as passionate about it as I am. So it really has been just an outpouring of people wanting to contribute. And right now, as you know, you know, we're, we're forming this, this trans-serving squad where there's a lot of coordination. Everybody's super excited. Um, the Dean Zeeland wants to promote uh, the channel, you know, himself. So it's going to be the, the official trans-serving, uh, trans-serving TV on YouTube. So I want it to really become uh, the place where people, people can go for any trans-serving content they need. Videos explain concepts or techniques, um, audio books, uh, you know, all sorts of things we have planned. And I really just want it to be like a one-stop, you know, location for any, any, any information about trans surfing. So the word can get out there, uh, without somebody necessarily having to read the book. Yeah. I think that's a really, really smart. It's a, it's a long book. Uh, there's a lot of really nuanced sort of mysterious seeming concepts, uh, in the book. Uh, but I, like you, um, had witnessed these phenomenon the majority of my life, you know, and I just didn't have the words or the map. I guess it's like, to me, trans surfing really provides a clear model of like how to get, how to attain a goal. It's really clear and concise, but then there's a lot of these nuanced, detailed sort of things as well that he goes into, you know, energetic, uh, things like, uh, like balancing forces and, and pendulums. Um, and, uh, and so I think it, it's really cool that you're, uh, trying to get this, this knowledge system or in, information structure, like available and palatable for people. I like you don't never really wanted to be in front of the camera, but, um, I felt like, like very similarly that some of these ideas just needed a little bit of explanation and yes, you know, we, we don't always explain everything perfectly and things are going to work differently f for different people too. You know, we all have different subjective realities and experiences. So I think there's a, I think that that's, what's so cool about it. It's, it's, I, I felt the same way when I read it. I mean, I zoomed right through it and as you know, like just was so amazed by the book that I was like, well, I'm just going to record this and put it out there and see what happens. You know? <laughs> like, yes. I don't. Oh, totally. I don't know. You know? So, uh, but no, it's amazing. And I think it's great. Everyone in the group has been so cool and, uh, so kind and, and I'm really excited to, uh, to be a part of, of the collaboration. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of really good content, uh, coming from that channel too. So yeah, we'll have the books up there. Uh, but people there's there's some rock stars uh oh absolutely yeah and if you look at it this way I think, I'm not sure, I mean, I guess um, Vadim Zeeland and Tufty uh, doing that whole, I don't know if you saw the the Tufty videos on YouTube, but that was a pretty, pretty epic project, right? Yeah, <laughs> Her yeah. Sitting on the throne and, you know, so, so this is what happens when trans surfers come together for a project, right? It becomes epic. Everybody's happy. Everybody's pumping in, you know, a huge amount of positivity, but also creative energy. And it, who knows where it can go? I mean, this, and, and, and this is the interesting thing about this project and, and trans surfing is that this is exactly what Vadim speaks of when he speaks about, uh, your happiness to the goal, right? You should, you should choose a goal that your heart says yes to, and your mind says yes to, and you have the energy to walk towards every single day. But if you never reach the end, and each day, it's just you taking steps towards the goal, they feel fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. That's, that's where you want to be, right? I'm not looking forward to the end of this project. I'm not looking at this project like, oh, I can't wait until Transurfing TV is just so well-rounded with so much content and millions of subscribers. I'm not looking at it like that. I'm looking at how much pleasure and how much joy and how much free energy I have to do this every day. I wake up in the morning and honestly, I feel like the luckiest person in the world 
every morning. It is unbelievable. And this is exactly what Vadim speaks of, you know, waking up and feeling joy for your day, feeling joy and energy for your projects, feeling like you're coordinated, moving through your day, putting in to your reality what you feel it's asking for in order for you to receive back all the things that you intend to have. I mean, it is like a miracle. I don't have to try to do anything anymore. All this stuff just comes to me. I plug into it in the right way. I feed it the way that um, I know it needs to be fed. And it's amazing. <laughs> I have, I mean, I, I don't want to say I have a perfect life, but I can't find anything wrong with my life. You know, <laughs> yeah. I cannot find anything wrong with my life. If you were to tell me, if you were to ask me right now, what's one thing that you would change about your life? I would say nothing. That's amazing. There's, I I wouldn't I wouldn't change anything. Like this is working out exactly as it should as I've planned, my world is taking care of me, yep. all that stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you really have you really have to uh to be it, it's 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 really just a spiral of it's an upward spiral, you know, and it, it, it the more that you test these principles out and then and then they come through, you know, and and, and then that just reconfirms your knowledge of, tra of, of what you're doing. And it just continues to just blossom further and further and further. It's amazing. Oh, it's amazing. It, it really is amazing. It really is a miracle. And just the sensations that I have on a daily basis. I mean, that alone, like break, you know, breaking it down and, and let's just take away like the projects and, um, you know, uh, my finances and, you know, my good relationships with my family, take all this, all the, the, the bonuses of my reality away and just look at how I feel like on a day-to-day -day basis like when I'm in my car right and I'm driving down the street and I've got the windows down and I've got some music playing I feel like I can't even I can't even put it into words I feel like I am absolutely living the best reality that I possibly could just just being in the moment there's, there's nothing lacking. Everything is, you know, my world is taking care of me. Everything is going according to plan. Things are working out beautifully and will continue to do so with ease. I mean, that mantra follows me everywhere and that's how I feel. I mean, it, 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 it's remarkable. It really is remarkable. And I wonder a lot as Vadim is happy when he's driving down the street in his car, does he feel the same things I'm feeling? <laughs> I think so. Like I've been to the point of just so much joy outpouring and feeling in, in my body where I just like, t I, I well up and tears will start streaming down my face just randomly. You know, I mean, it's not a, it's not a thing that a man's super proud to uh, admit, but it's just tears of joy and overwhelm with just positive emotions to where I almost feel guilty about how good I feel, you know? I know, I know, like other, <laughs> like other, like other people are missing out. Well, I'll tell you what, I started crying the other day. Uh, I was on Instagram and somebody sent me a, a DM and it said, I want to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. You have completely transformed my reality and I love you so much. And you have been such an amazing gift to me and, and everybody. And I didn't even know the person, you know, I didn't know who the person was and I'm reading this thing and I'm like, how can this be, you know, how can this possibly be? And, uh, uh, you know, part of my story that I left out, um, from my past is I actually suffered from severe depression. Um, severe depression is an understatement. Uh, I was hospitalized three times, between the ages of 14 and 23 years old, because I would get so depressed that I would freeze up and I could barely move. I remember the last time I was hospitalized, I was in the shower and I was frozen. I could not move. I could not move my body. And I felt the weight of the world on me. I was in a horrible place. I mean, reality was not nice to me. My mindset was... <sighs> just, I, I, I can't, I mean, it was so long ago and it was so bad and I've probably blocked a lot of it out. But I think the reason that I've been able to do this and take this this far is because 
I truly understand the darkness. You know, I have been there. Um, I didn't have the nicest childhood growing up and I was not in control of my reality, you know, and, and, and the dark side of, of reality creation is obviously, you know, create your own reality, but if you don't, one will be created for mm-hmm. you. Right. That's right. So, so, so one had been created for me that I was not able to deal with as a child or a young, young adult. And, I, I, I was in a horrible state. Um, so I think that that's why I've been able to take this to the other side is I've, I've touched on that dark side. I know what that's like. Um, and it's obviously a horrible place to be in. Um, but now today, I mean, I can't tell you the last time that I felt depressed. I, I, I honestly can't. I mean, depression is just no longer a, a piece of my a piece of my reality. It just isn't. Um, and 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 a lot of that has to do with just creating an environment where I do believe you know, my world is taking care of me and everything is working out to my benefit and things are working out beautifully, you know, and I've said these things so many times to myself that it's just my new, it's my new program. I have, I have eradicated the old program and, and placed a, a new program where the old one was and in doing that, um, affecting people in different parts of the world where they send me these DMS like that. I'm just like, this is amazing. This is amazing. I mean, obviously I had to take the action to get my energy to extend that far, right? But transurfing was the vessel, right? Transurfing, if you live transurfing every day, you are going to affect people. You are going to raise the vibrational frequency of those around you, you are going to create a better world just by you creating a better reality for yourself, you know, so it just really like, every day, I'm shocked. Every day, I'm amazed. Every day, I'm blown away. I get DMs like that. And I start crying because I'm just like, wow, you did it, Renee, like you went from being so depressed, you couldn't move to affecting people halfway around the world that you don't even know because of your positive energy. Like if that's not a miracle, I don't know. What yeah, it is. that's amazing. Yeah. I've, I've, I've yeah. had a few too, just that made me cry, just comments. And all I did was read the book. I mean, I just read the book cause I, you know, cause I felt like I should. And, um, but you know, so I didn't really do anything other than just, you know, recording stuff, but I still get like so many messages and, uh, through YouTube and also through Instagram too. I've had a few people just reach out and say, thank you. And it means so much just for them to comment or say, thank you. Like the fact that, that, you know, people are finding it helpful is like the biggest gift. You know what I mean? It's just like, and it just continues to build on gratitude and positive energy. Um, Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's part of the reward, you know, it's part of the reward. It's like, you know, a lot of the things that I've done for transurfing, you know, I, I, I charge for instruction and I charge to, um, become a certified instructor, right. And lead people, give people my program and teach them how to teach others. So, so, so I get financial compensation for that, but 90% of the stuff that I've done for transurfing has been for no money, you know? Um, but the thing is, is the, 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 the payout that I've gotten, well, the emotional, the, the emotional payout, oh, just that it it's is, like you said earlier, oh, you had all that money and cars and you lived on a yacht for God's sake. I mean, Jesus, you know, I know. So I know, I mean, yeah, but the way that I feel like inside my body, <laughs> I don't think there's a, I don't, there's not enough, there's not enough money in the world that, that I would trade that for dude. Like, Oh, it is it. And, and, you know, I think that's probably why, like, there are a lot of trans surfing questions. People People contact me all the time with transurfing questions. And there are a few that really, really annoy me. You know, I know I shouldn't be getting annoyed as a transurfer, but I'm just like, oh, I think you got to be honest. That's funny. (laughs) I know. I know. I know. It is. It is. Which which are the ones that annoy you? I'd love to know. It's funny. Oh, gosh. Well, the ones, the ones where people are like, I want to make a lot of money Uh, without doing anything. Gotcha. You know, I want to make a lot of money without doing anything. And 
and and and I say to them, you know, sometimes I go into it more than others, but I'm like, listen, money is not where it's at. It's nice. It's nice to have money in the bank, but no amount is ever enough. Right. And if that's the and if that's the 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 track that you're living on, good luck to you, right? Yeah. Because because here's the thing. I lived in LA, like I said, I lived on a gorgeous yacht. Uh, in Marina del Rey, I had nice cars, you know, I was image obsessed. So I looked, looked the LA part, right? I had lots of nice clothes and nice jewelry and all this crap, right? But I would be sitting on my deck of my boat crying over something or some guy or some, you know, oh, deal didn't go through or something like that. Oh, and I, and I was absolutely miserable. Now, it's not to say that I don't like money. I still like money. But when I get money, I, it, there's not this emotional charge anymore. The emotional, the emotional charge, that, that, that uptick in energy, that comes from feeling like I have affected someone mm -hmm. in a positive way. That's where it's at for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's where I feel like I'm shining. And the other, the other thing is I used to place a huge amount of my self-esteem on my appearance and how much money I had in the bank you know, and how nice my stuff was. That was where my self-esteem came from. If I lost some money, I was devastated. You know, if somebody cut my hair in the wrong way, I was devastated. Because that's where all my self-esteem was coming from. My self-esteem now <laughs> comes from doing intellectual work, creating creating lessons, getting involved in the book, creating something that can extend the knowledge to other people, affecting people, teaching other people how to teach this stuff, you know, giving lessons to people so they can go out and start seeing results in their reality and come back and be like, oh, wow, you wouldn't believe what happened to me the other day, you know, and, and, and tell me this story that they get it now and, and, and their reality is changing and they're getting more benefits from their reality or more rewards or they're just feeling better. I mean, those are the things that give me self-esteem. So when people message me, it's usually one of two questions. How do I get more money and not have to do anything for it? <laughs> and, and how am I going to get my partner? You know, oh, yeah. that's another one. How am I going to get my partner? And I feel for people. I mean, you know, I've, I've struggled romantically for, for years. I mean, I'm an older adult now. So like I've had my fair share of like thinking things were going to work out and they didn't and breakups and then being lonely and then finding somebody else thinking it's going to work out and then it doesn't. So I get that whole like romantic roller coaster thing, but you know, the, the time when I actually found the person that I fell in love with and he fell in love with me for who I really, really am. And the whole thing just worked out and it's good. And it's exactly how I always envisioned it. It only worked once I dropped importance on getting him, you know, and just living my own life, doing my own thing, worrying about myself and, you know, taking care of my own shit, right? And, and that attracted the most amazing, beautiful human being for me. I didn't have to go try to find anyone. Me living my true self through reality transurfing attracted exactly what it was that I had been looking for, but I needed to drop importance and I needed to really just work on myself and be myself, you know? And then magic. My reality gives me exactly what I'm asking for. But dropping importance w was the number one key. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, dropping importance. That's, that's the biggest thing I've learned. Cause I'm a big, I'm a big like daydreamer. I used to always daydream when I was a kid and still, still do. So doing slides is no problem, but being attached to the slide has been my problem in the past. And so transurfing really helped with that. And so like just knowing to drop importance and that, you know, the trick there is, Sometimes you can't, you know, because you just have so much desire. But he says in the book, though, if you uh, if you, uh, you 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 pretend one time that you didn't get it, you know, like you, and yes. then that that's a way that you can let go of the desire and let go of of importance for it. And it, it Absolutely, if you feel that way, like, and that's the interesting thing too. Honestly, it's like the way that I feel is attracting 
things to, toward me. And it's like you said, as soon as you dropped importance and you allowed what is it, like the frail of your soul, like the shape of your soul to just shine and beam, then of course totally. that person just walks right into your life. And it, we know this phenomenon. I mean, there's, there's, there's no mystery there. It's, it's you, you usually do find somebody when you aren't trying to find somebody like that. I think everybody experiences that and romantically, you know, yes. <clears throat> and that has to be a really hard question to deal with. Like, that's just there's so many nuances in relationships. And Vadim even says in the book, like, like, I can't really explain love. But <laughs> Here's the answer to every yeah. question you've ever thought of, except one. <laughs> yes, totally. And, 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 and here and here's the reason for that. And uh, Dr. Salah El Rashad, who is an amazing man, uh, his understanding of trans surfing is beyond anything. <laughs> I mean, it, it's wild. He's up there with Vadim sh- for sure. And I would say it was probably a, uh, last year I was doing a seminar for him and I was in the chapter, um, outer importance and frailing, um, or sorry, outer intention and frailing. And, uh, <clears throat> we, we had taken a break and we were standing outside and I said, I said, I have a question for you. Um, Salah, I said, why, why can't you, um, why can't you transurf other people? <laughs> like, why can't you, if you, if you, um, if you can transurf things, right? Like I want a new car or I want a new job or I want a new house or I want this thing to happen. And you think about it and then, you know, you take the right steps and then the thing starts to come to fruition. Like it comes into your reality. So wh- why can't you transurf other people? And he said, because another person has their own will, right? So, so these inanimate objects or entities that we desire to have or intend to have rather uh, a new job, a new car, a new piece of jewelry or whatever it is, it's just material um, that's sort of mindless. So pulling it onto your track isn't that difficult. Uh, that's why I've had, you know, a lot of fortune in my, in my life, uh, cause I understood that concept relatively easy and I could pull all sorts of cool material things onto my track, but you cannot pull something onto your track that has a will of its own. That's, that's right? like witchcraft, you, right? Like basically. Exactly. I mean, you can do it. You can do it, but it's not going to end. No, well it's going to be you, ugly. Right? You know that's going to be gonna, bad. Yeah, that's a it's, metaphysical it's gonna, mess. It's, <laughs> it's going to yes, it's a metaphysical mess exactly. So, I formulated a little way of explaining uh, inner intention, outer intention, and frailing. So, inner intention is when you try to when you try to bend reality using your own will. Okay. Outer intention is when you use the uh, will of your environment to bend your reality. Okay. And then frailing is when you use the will of another human being to bend your reality. So there's, there's, there's three different ways you can, you can spin it. Most people, obviously, as we know, are using inner intention right? They're using their own will to try to create results in their reality. And as we know from the trans surfing book, that takes a lot of energy, right? And oftentimes, whatever you've, whatever you've managed to accumulate is going to go to spoils at some point, because it takes your will to continue to keep it on your track, right? That's what I did in LA. There was a lot of that. So, so, so outer, outer intention is tapping into the will of your environment. So all this work that I've done with transurfing, that's asking myself, what does transurfing want? What is the will of transurfing? Okay. Some practical guidebooks and some, you know, transurfing TV, and I'll try to get the word out there on Instagram. You know, that's using the will of, of transurfing, the will of the transurfing environment to, uh, create material that's going to 
feed me in some way. So then the frailing side of that is obviously taking the will of another person, right? So that is asking a person, what can I do for you? Right. So when I was with Vadim in St. Petersburg and we were sitting there talking, he had this little smirk on his face. And the way that I translated that was that he knew the exact reason that I was sitting there was because I had used outer intention and frailing, you know, and it had gotten me there. And I was saying, what can I do for you? What can I do for transurfing? And me doing that you know, produced me having one of the most amazing experiences of my life, you know, sitting for hours in a closed restaurant with Vadim Zeeland, having a in-depth conversation because I was using outer intention and frailing. Had I used my own inner intention, who knows, you know, but this has become the mode that I exist in now. And I try to teach this to others. So the, the, the whole, the whole, um, you know, money question and relationship question, your two out answers there are use outer intention for the money, right? Yep. That's, that's an, in, that's an inventor, right? All an inventor is, I use this as an example all the time. All an inventor is doing is he is looking to his environment and saying, what does my environment need? What is the will of my environment? Oh, my environment needs, um, like let's use Bill Gates for an example. My environment needs a platform online that can connect us all over the world and, uh, you know, create an environment where we have unlimited information available to us. That was, that was, uh, that was use of outer intention to create something, you know, that was in line with his skill set, and he was obviously coordinated and look what happened. Right. So, so, so outer intention is tapping in to your environment and figuring out what it needs, how you can give it to it in order for you to get what it is that you want. And it's the same thing. So that's the money part of it. And then the relationship part of it is what is a partner going to want? Does a partner want somebody that's sitting around needy for a relationship to start? Or does a partner want to see somebody living their life, living their true self, you know, living, living their dream and then be like, oh, wow, I want to be a part of that. That looks super cool. I'd love to be with that person. Right. Right. So it's all about intention at the end of the day. And most people, again, are using inner intention. And that's why things are so, quote unquote, challenging. Yep. Because it, in the, if there's one pattern that I see there, it's that inner intention is trying to take and the other two are giving energies. It's like, what can I give what does the world need? Let me provide that. Let me give that. And frailing is what does this person need? Let me give them what they desire. And then you'll be, you'll have your needs filled in, you know, as a result. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, that's where the, the dual mirror also comes into play, right? When you, when you reach towards that mirror and you continue to do a pulling motion towards you, right? You're just taking from your reality. So imagine your hands are outstretched and you're grabbing and you're pulling in and you're just taking and taking and taking. That's inner intention. That's what your mirror is going to respond back to you. So it's going to then take from you. Now, if you offer your hands out, here, take this, here, have this, here, what do you need? How can I help you? You know, and you just are continuously outreaching your hands, giving to your environment, your mirror starts to do the same thing. People are offering me things all the time now because it's just responding to me and my actions, right? So, so the person that's saying, I want a relationship now, or I want more money now, they're just taking and, the, and their mirror is taking in return. You need to flip it around and you need to start to give you know, everywhere you can kick into your reality, what it's asking you for. But obviously you need to have your eyes open enough to see what those things are. Right. And that's where, you know, taking care of your, 
pendulums, cleaning up your your reality of pendulums and making sure that you have free energy to to do things and to see things when they, you know, when they come around. So that's, you know, it, it, there is a little more work to it than that, but it's easy once you get the hang of it. You know, it and it and it will continuously give to you if you continuously give. You know, it's 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 a miracle. It really is a miracle. Yeah, that's awesome. I know people are going to want to ask or are probably curious about this too. So I'm just going to ask, what's Vadim Zeeland like? You know, everybody's going to want to know that. I'm oh, sure. yeah. Yes. He yes, does look yes, cooler yes. than uh, all of us combined, by the way, like in those photos <laughs> <laughs> with his space yes. glasses on. I'm like, dude, that guy looks so cool. <laughs> okay. So, so, so I'll tell the, I'll tell a very brief part of the story, which is kind of interesting. And I don't know why it played out this way, but I was to meet Vadim at a restaurant in St. Petersburg that was closed to the public. So it was only going to be us in there. There was, um, four others. So it was, it was me, um, two other trans surfers, uh, Peter Lebowski from Vest Publishing House, uh, who published the trans surfing books, uh, Tatiana, who is the face of Tufty and runs the uh, trans surfing center in St. Petersburg and Vadim Zeeland. So I guess there was six of us all together. So there was a table of six, uh, there was three people sitting across, oh, sorry, um, two people on both sides of me. And then across from me, there was two chairs and the one in the middle was open and Vadim Zeeland wasn't there yet. So everybody's waiting, you know, and this like anticipation's building, like, oh, he's coming, he's coming, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like coming out of my skin. First of all, I'm like, I'm thinking, how did I even get here? This is so <laughs> no fucking, shit, right? this is, this is, this is so fucking yeah. weird. Like I'm, I'm sitting there. I feel like I'm in some surreal dream. It's a gorgeous day in St. Petersburg. I'm all dressed up. I'm sitting in this beautiful restaurant and I'm waiting for Vadim Zeeland to walk in. And I'm just like, I mean, I'm coming out of my skin. So we're sitting there and we're talking and then, and then, and then I see him outside through the window and he walks up and he comes in the door. And everybody just stops. And it's like everybody, there's like this, this like energy drop, just like, boom, like, boom, like Vadim Zeeland's ear, you know? And we're all watching him walk towards the table. Just, I mean, we, I can't imagine what we looked like, you know, just like, oh, uh, like. <laughs> just fanboying out, dude. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. So then, so then he gets over to the table and he sees the chair across from me open. He's standing at the end of the table. He sees the chair across from me open. And I believe it was Peter Lebowski that was sitting next to me on my right. And he says to Peter in Russian, get up and you take that chair. I want to sit down next to her. Wow. <laughs> okay. So that's crazy. So when that, so when that happened, I almost had a panic attack. Right. I don't know. I don't know why, but like then he sits down next. Well, cause I was kind of like seeing him sitting across from me, you know, but then, then he's sitting next to me. And in my mind, I'm just like thinking, Oh my God, I'm sitting next to Vinnie Zealand. Oh my God, I'm sitting next, you know, and I'm so nervous and I don't know how to talk to him. I'm like, I'm like, what do I say? Like, and what am I even doing here? <laughs> I, would... I mean, oh, it was, it was super weird. I mean, I mean, talk about a surreal moment. It was super, super weird. So the lunch went on for literally hours and we talked about all sorts of things, um, diet you know he was very curious about my diet and asking me how i ate and i talked about his and we talked about trans surfing and we talked about um i can't remember if we're talking about tufty i think tufty was just an idea at that point um but we we just talked and talked and talked and he's very very soft spoken uh, very deliberate in his, his, his words. Like he really, you know, you can tell he thinks about things before he s says something. Um, no ego, none. You get not even an, uh, just a little sense of an ego from him at all. The most humble, kind, um, generous, like the energy from him was just so generous. Uh, it, 
unbelievable. I, I've never met anybody like him. His energy is truly exceptional. Um, I walked away from that feeling like that was hands down the best experience I had ever had in my life. And then obviously after that, he, he has supported me in everything. Um, I have direct contact with him. If I need something, I ask him, you know, he's involved me in a couple of little projects that he's currently working on. And it's just been, it's just been amazing. I mean, my my cup overfloweth for sure. For sure, you know, yeah, yeah. like well, he seems yeah. like a really like private it, guy. Uh, like everything you oh, read of him, you know, is, yeah. he's oh, yes. really like doesn't want to. He doesn't want any limelight. You know, he doesn't want to be in the, you know, in people's view. I guess right. Yes, he does not. And I asked him, and I knew I was going to get a no, but I asked him if he would uh, give us an interview for Reality Transfer Fring TV, and he was like, no. Nope. <laughs> Fair enough, man. No, it's cool. <laughs> and I was like, I knew it was coming, but I had to at least throw it out there. Well, you know? it seems like it's win-win anyway. He doesn't want to be in you know in the limelight and so there's several people that are going to be contributing to transurfing tv and and breaking down some of these concepts and hopefully making them more palatable so it seems like it, it it's you know fulfilling his intention as well as 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 the people who are going to be on the on the channel teaching as well so that they feel like they need to be doing it and he doesn't probably want to be in front of a camera and i understand that <clears throat> absolutely absolutely yeah but it's cool it's going to be a, a really exciting project i'm super excited about it renee i know me too i think this is going to be this is going to be a major 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 highlight for me with all the trans surfing stuff i mean i i've loved doing the seminars with with salah al rashad in in uh in our secret location and uh you know i've loved making the lessons and all the instruction that i've given to people i mean it has been amazing to see uh, this information just trans transform people's lives i i love all these different aspects but i'm really excited excited to get this trans surfing TV go. And I think it's just going to be outrageously fun. Yeah. So yeah, I, I awesome. can't wait for more. That's awesome. So, yes. um, so yeah. So, uh, do you want to tell people where they can find you and, and how, if they wanted to become, you know, certified or do the trans surfing thing through you, how would they do that? Yep. So, uh, you can find me on Instagram reality underscore trans surfing. Uh, or you can uh, go to my website, www.transurfing.us, or email me directly, renee at transurfing.us. Um, <clears throat> I do certify. Uh, I am quite full on my my schedule right now, so I'm actually putting... Um, putting instruction on hold uh, for a while. I do do that when I have a lot of projects going at once, but I do have a number of certified instructors that have taken my program, which uh, is endorsed by Vadim Zeeland, um, that are, you know, available to instruct anybody um, for trans surfing. So if you wanted to reach out to me, I could, uh, you know, directly um, connect you with somebody, or you can go to my website under instructors and see uh the instructors that are currently available for trans surfing instruction awesome yeah that's again that website is www.transurfing.us transurfing.us yes awesome well thank you so much for coming on and and talking uh i'm really excited i I think a lot of people are going to be really excited and 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 uh want to participate in this project and uh Everybody out there who's listening, be sure to go to Transurfing TV and subscribe to that YouTube channel. There's going to be a lot of really cool content up there. All the books are going to be on the website. Or I'll, Let me try that again. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> I'll cut this out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> or just leave yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. It's fine. <laughs> it's Transurfing. Yeah, Drop that's right. It's not, it's not a big deal. <laughs> Transurfing TV. That's where you want to go on YouTube. Okay? Transurfing TV people. All this stuff is going to be there. And if you uh, want to talk to Renee, reach out to her. Transurfing.us is her website. So this has been... And follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. Follow on Instagram. Yeah. Reality underscore Transurfing. Yep, that's it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. And uh, we'll be in touch soon. Thank you, yeah, Owen. I'm really excited about the project. And um, yeah, well, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Renee. Sounds good. Thanks. Have a good one. Thanks for tuning in to the Reality Transurfing podcast presented to you by Transurfing TV. Be sure to go to transurfing.us 
to get a free 20-day email course. Opt in at my Gumroad website if you want to be part of the laziest email marketer ever's list. And uh, you can also support me on patreon.com slash Bootsy Greenwood. Thanks, everybody, and happy surfing.